who was anonymous because he was in a state of Alabama where he wasn't legally allowed to uh, practice, uh, detoxed my son with EDTA therapy. And someday we're going to talk about solutions. Uh, my uh, story is that I caught it so early before heavy metals could get into his brain. And, and Ethan is today a healthy 13 year old and okay. But I think that Laurel deserves our applaud again because imagine a mom with four children with autism trusting doctors not knowing what's going on and she still believes in Yeshua, has strong faith and she's here helping other people. So thank you Laurel. I love you too. <laughs> okay, and I just hope that my presentation uh, will work on there because I have some visuals and I'm just simply prepared with PowerPoint and without a PowerPoint it's not going to be good. <laughs> so I'm giving them a little bit of time. Thank you so much. And praise the Lord for people who understand these things. And <laughs> <laughs> We didn't learn computer in Alabama. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Slovakia, that's Alabama and Europe. <laughs> <laughs> Slovakia is actually worse off than Czech Republic, and you were in Czech, Czech Republic, Steve, and uh, you see how developed this nation is. It's like America almost. And uh, Slovakia is a little bit behind, but I'm from Slovak part of Czechoslovakia. That's where I come from. Yeah. So, us being back there for almost three years now without coming here. I spoke so much Czech that I forgot some English. So if you hear some problems in my pronunciation or grammar problems or something, uh, you can scream out and help me. Or if I forget a word, like English word I wanna say and I can't say it. Or I can just do this here, like that. <laughs> <laughs> and you won't see me. <laughs> yeah, so is it ready? Chris is doing a okay, so I will just chat a little more. And the reason I don't have my son's story here is that he was supposed to come. Uh, my daughter was supposed to stay uh, with grandpa and he was supposed to come because he's very uh, interested in a debate this afternoon about flat earth versus globe. and. Uh, he won't let me put up his picture, talk about his story when he's here, so I just had to completely leave that part out, but since he's not here, <laughs> but he, he actually said he's going to watch this debate live and he hopes that that can make it possible. Uh, so, uh, since he's not here, on Sunday when we are talking about solutions, I won't have time today to speak to you about solutions or what to do when you have autistic child or when you are a vaccine injured because vaccine injury it's not only about autism it is we are in an age of autistic epidemic of epidemic of autism and i don't know if you're familiar with statistics but by the year of 2030 every third american boy that's hard to talk about this will be autistic okay I have a really hard time because I watch this video right now and it's really difficult to imagine the pain, you know. Okay. Some statistics say they were done on American boys. Oh, now it works. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, by the, eight, by the uh, year of 2030, every third American boy will be autistic if we don't do something. 
study was done on boys as why well. they're saying yes the study was included but boys are more susceptible Yes, because of XY chromosomes are a little bit weaker than XX chromosomes, and it has something to do with that. So, study was done exclusively on boys, and yes, uh, every third American boy will be autistic if we don't do something. So, it's becoming not only issue of health, but also spiritual issue, I believe, as in my presentation, I prepared it especially from the spiritual point as well, but I'm going to get into uh, what vac vaccines contain and some reactions that's happening in the body. I'll go into uh, what aluminum and glyphosate do in our body, okay? So you understand a little bit more of what's really happening when you get vaccines. Um, Many of you probably got vaccines and you have vaccinated children and you want to tell me, well, but I'm okay. And my children are very healthy and smart and they made it really far in life and they were vaccinated. And that's wonderful. I'm very happy that that happened, that nothing wrong happened to your child or yourself. But uh, vaccines are injuring many children because they cannot Withstand, their immune system cannot withstand the chemicals that are being put, the toxins and heavy metals that they are putting inside these vaccines. So it, they have this um, saying, uh, survival of the fittest, you know. <laughs> so this is how they think. The, the, the strong people will survive and the weak ones, we can just let them go. So if nothing happened to you and you are vaccinated, you have a strong immune system that could deal with it, I'm very, very happy. I was vaccinated and I think I'm okay. Although I will tell you that vaccine injury is not only for children, because later in life, you might be diagnosed with cancer. And you might think, oh, that's normal. It's just, you know, people have cancer. Well, I will show you in my presentation that cancer epidemic that we have today is linked to vaccines that we got as children. So uh, there was a polio vaccine in 1950s and 60s that was um, contaminated with a virus called SV40. And that particular virus have caused cancer epidemic in this generation. Now, what was really strange is that children of these people who were vaccinated and they received SV40 virus in polio vaccine also got cancers, even if they didn't receive polio vaccine. So what happened here? Basically, this particular vaccine damaged the DNA to such an extent that these vaccinated people with cancer from SV40 has transferred cancer to their offspring. So even if you are not vaccinated, but your parents were vaccinated, you can be sick. You can get vaccine injury only because your parents were vaccinated. Because vaccines are damaging DNA. Now, you may say that, oh, why is this happening? And we have theories of money, of course, pharma, big pharma, huge profits. Cancer is a million, billion dollar industry. They're making a lot of money from cancer. It's a very, very good business. Cancer is an excellent business in medical field. Okay. Uh, but I think that it's not only money. I think it's more sinister and more evil than that. I really do. And we'll talk about this as I have here. I'm just kind of ranting because I don't know what else to do. <laughs> so, You're doing great. You are. You're doing great. Yeah. Is it fixed? You are fixed. All right. Thank you.
I really apologize for all these technical delays and it was all in Russian by the way uh, so the Russians here <laughs> A lot of people say I'm Russian, which I'm not. <laughs> but they say, oh, Steve has a Russian wife. And <laughs> that they're like Russian News Live, you know. So. <laughs> I do help him with some Russian translation. And the only reason I know Russian a little bit is because I lived under communistic regime as a child. And we had compulsory la Russian language. So whether I wanted or not, I had to learn Russian. Um, but I'm from Czechoslovakia, and now only Slovakia. Okay, your body, his temple, the temple of God under attack. Forge yes. There we go. Okay, next slide, please. Oh, great, you cannot see my note, excellent. All right, I would like to start with the Bible verse, Psalm 139, 14. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knows right well. King James Bible. When we think of salvation, we often think of the salvation of the soul. <laughs> We don't pay, close, we don't pay much attention to the body we have, yet in the scriptures we are encouraged to look at our body as sacred to God. Psalmist here expressed his admiration over the creation of the human body. We are made by the hands of God and God does not make mistakes. We indeed are wonderfully made. Next slide. <laughs> and when we speak of how wonderfully we are made, I like to always bring up embryo and fetus because I'm originally a nurse midwife in my country. But this time, because we are speaking about vaccines, our immune system is under attack by evil spirits. Okay, so I have brought up some amazing mic macrophage. Now, the term macrophage conjures images of a hungry white blood cell, gobbling invading bacteria. However, macrophages do much more than that. Not only do they act as antimicrobial warriors, they also play critical roles in immune regulation and wound healing. They can respond to a variety of cellular signals and change their physiology in response to local cues. Now, there are many amazing things about the human body and you can research, you can just put in a Google 10 amazing things about human body and some really cool things come up, so try that. But I wanted to really speak about that. What you are seeing is a microphage eating bacteria here. Okay? God said in his law, do not kill. But our body has a system within it, in our blood, which is sacred to God, that has a killer cells, macrophages, okay? And they are killing the invaders. So yes, do not kill, do not bully anyone, don't go be violent and kill anyone, but do not you dare come and invade my body or my space, okay? God has specifically made our immune system to respond to invaders. And what we need to do is make that system strong and not by vaccines, but tomorrow on Sunday, I'm going to speak to you about what we do to help this system, this great amazing system that we have to make it strong and work for our body the way it was meant to be, okay? Our body needs three basic things to work right. It needs clean, pure water with no chemicals added, no fluoride, no chlorine. It needs pure air with no chemtrails, okay, and pollution. And it needs wholesome, organic food, mainly green. Plants are your best friends, 
okay? Anything green is your best friend. And tomorrow I'm going to talk about that as well. So, are we indeed wonderfully made? I think so. Okay. I want to bring up another scripture, 1 Thessalonians 5.23. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely, and may your spirit and soul and body be preserved complete without blame at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Notice the words of Apostle Paul. He didn't forget the body. He said the body, right? Okay, he said we are to be found without blame even in our body at the coming of our Lord. Of course, you may have heard that this applies to sins such as fornication or adultery. And of course, this is very true. We are to live a very sacred and honorable lives as Christians. But to be found without blame in our body also means to be watchful of how we treat it. Why is that? That will be answered with the following Bible verse. Why are we to pay attention to our body? I need another slide. <laughs> Hold on. Oh, okay. 1 Corinthians 6, 19 says, Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and that you are not your own? So, yes, our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. It is the temple of the living God. Did not Jesus say that he will be with us and even in us until end of all things? Now, sacrifices of animals are the things of the distant past. We don't offer goats and lambs for our sins anymore. We have Jesus that paid that price. But we do offer sacrifices of praise. Our lips, right? And our lips are the part of his temple. They are part of our body. By the way, the physical temple of God 2,000 years ago was built with the human body in view. Did you know that? Human body was its model. If you don't believe me, please check out work of the rabbi Orli who explained that the temple was laid out like the human body. And the Holy of the Holies laid in the same position as the human heart. And he expressed that this was evidence that God wants to live within us, within our heart. So since God lives within us, we must care for his temple the proper way. According to his word, and we must protect it from evil attack. Do you think that our temple is under attack? It sure is. Let's see. Second Thessalonians. I need another slide. Second Thessalonians 2, 3, 4. Chapter 2, verse 3, 4. Let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first. And the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself about all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Now, next, next slide, please. Now, I have the, temp the, the, the picture of the third temple, future third temple that is in Temple Institute in Jerusalem. And I have the temple of God, but it should be like a question mark there. I forgot to put it there. Okay. Um, now, the question is this. Is this the temple of God where the living God wants to dwell? That's the question. Now, I'm not here to argue any doctrines. There are many. And the doctrine of the third temple is extremely important to many in various faiths. But 
consider this. There are two organizations in Jerusalem that are working towards building the third temple. One is the Temple Mount Faithful Movement, and a founder of this movement, movement is Gershon Solomon. We know him very personally, and we had the honor to meet him, speak with him, and even bring the first fruit offering of barley harvest, a sheath of wave offering to the Lord with him. We were able to get pretty close to the Temple Mount, and we performed this offering with Solomon. We saw a very sincere heart of a Jewish man who sincerely believes, according to his Jewish faith, that there is a need for the third temple before coming of the Messiah. However, the second organization called the Temple Institute is closely cooperating with the Vatican on bringing the third temple to Jerusalem. When we went to see the Temple Institute, we had a tour there. After the tour, I asked one of the representatives if the temple they are preparing is the Ezekiel temple. Are you familiar with Ezekiel? Okay. Uh, from Ezekiel prophecy. And he firmly told me this is not so. He also told us that the old city of Jerusalem is not under Israeli control. So I ask, who is this temple for? <laughs> okay. Is it really for the living God? Is this for the Messiah? Also, when we were in Jerusalem with brother Paul Begley, he interviewed Yehuda Glick, who told him that the third temple will be built alongside the Dome of the Rock and between the Dome and, a th uh, and the... Al yes, it will be like a library for all the nations right there, okay? Now, Yehuda Glick, uh, when he is promoting the Third Temple, he is always including Muslims, Christians, and Jews together as the ones who will be able to worship there. Uh, even recently, Yehuda Glick said that uh, he believes that Allah is the same God as the God of Jews. Uh, this goes along with the Pope of Rome, who also not too long time ago invited Mahmoud Abbas and Shimon Peres to Vatican to pray together to the one God that they all share. So. A Muslim, a Jew, and a Christian together praying to the same God. This, ladies and gentlemen, is ecumenical movement. This is what this temple will be all about. So the question is, is this the temple of God? What is the true temple of God? I need next slide, please. And also, I just want to bring up Revelation 21, 22, where John saw New Jerusalem coming down from heaven, and he's saying, I did not see a temple in the city because the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. So he didn't see any temple there. Okay? And then, of course, I want to bring us back to 1 Corinthians 6, 19. Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you. Um, I think of a scripture, and I don't know it by memory. I'm not good with memorizing Bible verses by mm, chapters and all that. But I know Jesus, when he prayed with his disciples, or for his disciples, he said something like, I pray thee, Father, that they are one with us, as I am one with you, and I am in you, and you are in me, and they can be in Amen. with us. 17, okay, great, thank you. Yeah, so this is very deep revelation, okay, that few people understand today. So how we are to care for the temple, which is your body, which is our body, and how we are to protect it. Okay, next slide. Yes. Okay, vaccines. Now, we have established 
the fact that your body is his temple. Do you agree? Okay. So now I'm ready to go into the subject of vaccines. And here you see a mom who takes care of a vaccine injured child, right there. And on the second picture, you see a two strands of our DNA with a picture of a type of a humanoid. Now, that's not real human there on that picture particularly. It's some kind of an AI picture, like artificial intel intelligence uh, robot or something. Uh, it is a changed post-human. There is a name for these kind of people called post-humans or humans 2.0, okay? Uh, the vaccines are not only affecting our physical body. They are affecting our spirit. And you will see where I'm going with this. Don't think I'm crazy because I have a lot of proofs. And then if you don't believe me, that's okay. Uh, you will do research yourself and you will find out what is really, really going on and where all of this is going. You see, science has for years now recognized our two physical strands of DNA that are active but scientists also know that there is 10 additional DNA strands that we have, okay, that they call junk DNA. They call it as something not needed. They don't know what it is for. And DNA is basically like a set of blueprints, okay? It contains instruction needed to construct other components of the cells. The segments of DNA that carry genetic information are called genes. So your DNA is your personal blueprint and as such it contains all, and I repeat, all of your mental, physical, emotional and your spiritual information. Okay. Now the more and more it's been proven now in science that with uh, preoccupation of our left brain thinking, we are kind of losing our spiritual abilities, like intuition, like well, intuitive abilities that we were originally created with. We are spiritual beings. We live in a physical body, but we are spiritual beings. And I want to tell you that these vaccines are affecting our DNA and they're changing our DNA. And maybe you will understand it by the end of this uh, presentation. Can I have a next slide, please? Just a second. All right. We are frogs in a boiling water. Just in case you don't know what that means, I just wrote it out here. So the boiling frog is an anecdote describing a frog slowly being boiled alive. The premise is that if a frog is placed in a boiling water, it will jump out. But if it is placed in a cold water that is slowly heated, it will not perceive the danger and it will be cooked to death. So next slide, please. That is us. We are the frogs <laughs> in the boiling water. I know that guy. Yeah. <laughs> Next slide. All right. It's time to jump out, wake up, educate, and save our humanity. All right. Now, a lot of people tell me I am not doing anything. I'm waiting on Jesus. He will take care of it all. And I wait on Jesus too. Okay? We all wait on him. But we are to occupy until he comes. All right? We have a responsibility here as his ambassadors. Luke 19, 13, and he said unto them, Occupy till I come. And I know you can, you know, have all kinds of interpretation to that verse. But we are to occupy and we are to be busy. Hosea 4, 6, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Seeing you have forgotten the law of thy God, I also will forget your children. We certainly don't, and also you can interpret this verse many different ways, but we, many people, we suffer. Many times we suffer unnecessary pain for lack of knowledge, lack of education. <clears throat> so we need to educate and we need to tell people about what is going on. Yes, we wait on Jesus, that's true. Uh, next slide. 
Now I'm going to more technical uh, part of my speech, aluminum and vaccines. Uh, there is many things in vaccines, but, and I will mention them all, almost all, that are in vaccines. But I want to bring up two most dangerous uh, metals that are in vaccines. One of them, aluminum. Aluminum is a neurotoxin that plays significant role in neurological diseases such as dementia, autism, Alzheimer's disease, and Parkinson's disease. How many of you have seen people with Alzheimer's or are having someone in your family who has Alzheimer's? or Parkinson's. Oh, how many hands are going up? We, we have an epidemic of these diseases. Dementia, autism, I just told you, every third boy will be autistic by year of 2030. This is awful. Let's keep moving. Please, another slide. Thank you, brother. All right, I just listed some other things uh, associated with aluminum toxicity. Alzheimer's, amyotrophic, lateral, Sclerosis, anemia, hemolysis, leukocytosis, porphyria, colitis, dental cavities, hypoparathyroidism, kidney dysfunction, liver dysfunction, neuromuscular disorders, osteomalacia, Parkinson's disease, ulcers. I mean, some of them we cannot even pronounce these diseases. Keep moving. Please, another slide. But you know what concerns me the most, that it is proven that aluminum does DNA alteration. It alters your DNA. Abnormal regulation of gene function. Gene expression interference. It calcifies pineal gland. Pineal gland has something to do with melatonin, and I'll talk about this uh, in more depth soon. It damages cell membranes and causes myelin, which is insulating layer around the nerves, to stiffen and become dysfunctional. That's why we have so many nerve illnesses. Back pain, a lot of time, is nerve illness with the myelin sheath around that they are there inflamed. Aluminum increases cardiovascular disease risk, and we have epidemic or cardiovascular disease all over the world. It causes brain inflammation. Next slide, please. Glyphosate plus aluminum are a deadly combination. Glyphosate is a roundup. Oh, you, you probably. S that's not. A, hold on. I have a different slide. Sorry. Or maybe I just did a mistake, not you. Oh yeah, please, what doctors tell you about aluminum, I'm <laughs> sorry. Now, when, when you talk about aluminum and you go to your doctor and you say, oh, you know, I heard that this vaccine contain aluminum, I'm afraid to vaccinate. A uh, lot of times, and me as a nurse, I was trained to tell moms that aluminum is in breast milk, it's everywhere. <laughs> I mean, it's just uh, normal. Don't worry, okay? That's what doctors tell you. Here in America, Children's Hospital of Philadelphia Vaccine Education Center website said this about aluminum. I quote, aluminum is considered to be an essential metal with quantities fluctuating naturally during normal cellular activity. It is found in all tissues and is also believed to play an important role in the development of a healthy fetus. I am going to say this line of Trump, wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I have watched this thing debate, you know, with my son in Prague, and he said, wrong. <laughs> and <laughs> this is very, very wrong that they put this on Education Center website about vaccines. Next slide. What the doctor forgot to tell you about aluminum? Well, they forget to tell you that eating an aluminum and injecting it is not equivalent, okay? When ingested, the body absorbs between 0.2 to 1.5% of it, which is roughly 1%, okay? When injected, the body absorbs 100% of aluminum, all of it. 
aluminum is not essential to life. So that was a very wrong statement. On the contrary, it is a widely known neurotoxin that inhibits more than 200 biological functions in plants, animals, and humans. I say plants, you know why I said plants? Because chemtrails, and I'm not talking about chemtrails right now, don't, don't have time to speak about this. But in chemtrails, you have uh, non aluminum, nanoparticles of it, in a form of smart dust. Uh, they're coming down and aluminum is poisoning everything. And yes, we are to eat organic, but I have some bad news, guys. I don't think there is anything fully organic anymore. Okay, because chemtrails are getting everywhere, aluminum is everywhere, and it's poisoning our water, it's poisoning our food, it's poisoning our air. Trees are dying, forests are dying, and I want you to do your own research on this. All you have to do, go on Google and say dying forests, and hit search and you will be not believing what you're going to find. Aluminum promotes cellular death. It causes emotional instability, depression, lethargy, anxiety, attention problems, headaches, drying of the skin and heartburn. These are just minor things. Next slide. Glyphosate plus aluminum are deadly combination. They're best friends. <laughs> you know, glyphosate is found in Roundup. Next slide. It's an active ingredient in wheat killer called Roundup. It's a brain barrier. That means that if, by any chance, blood brain barrier, okay. I don't know if I say it in English correctly, but um, if by any chance you ingest something toxic, God made sure that there is a system in our body that brain has receptors that recognize it and they say, no, I'm not gonna let you in. Because body naturally wants to protect the brain, right? Because everything is regulated from the brain in your body. So guess what? That smart evil person or entity, <laughs> whatever they are, they have put glyphosate to a vaccine filled with aluminum because glyphosate will take aluminum with it and get through the blood brain barrier. Only glyphosate can get through the blood brain barrier. Aluminum can't. This is why when you're eating aluminum, only one person gets ingested, okay? The rest of it goes out from your body. That's your natural system is protecting you, God-given system. But by putting a glyphosate there, what they did is that they made glyphosate to bind to aluminum, and now aluminum has a way to get to your brain. So that is just a smart design, <laughs> okay? So yes, yeah, so let me read through it here. Glyphosate and aluminum work synergistically with one another. Glyphosate causes aluminum to be a lot more toxic. Glyphosate kills beneficial bacteria in the gut, which allows the bad bacteria to overgrow, cause leaky gut syndrome. Also, the undesirable bacteria produces so-called P-Cresol, that's a chemical called p -cresol. and a p -cresol promotes aluminum uptake by cells. This is why leaky gut syndrome goes with autism. Autistic children have a lot of digestive issues because of this glyphosate, okay? Glyphosate disrupts production of melatonin in our body, which is needed to detoxify aluminum and other metals like cadmium and lead. Now, you know, I told you that it calcifies pineal gland. Pineal gland is responsible for regulation of melatonin. So you don't have, and you have glyphosate and aluminum in your body, you don't have access to melatonin. And melatonin is not only good for promoting sleep, 
and circadian rhythm in your body, you know, wake up and sleep rhythm that you have naturally. But it also detoxifies cadmium, lead, and aluminum. But if you don't have access to it, you can detoxify. God gave you everything you need. God made sure that your pineal gland will produce, uh, regulate melatonin. But the smart evil entity knows that, and they have put in a vaccine this kind of chemicals that disrupts all this, okay? Glyphosate binds aluminum and is able to get through blood-brain barrier, taking aluminum to the brain, accumulating there, causing brain damage and inflammation. Glyphosate allows aluminum to gain entry as a calcium mimetic, then aluminum promotes calcium loss from bones and calcifies pineal gland. So do you see these two partners in crime? Next. What else is in the vaccines? I told you I will tell you other things that are in the vaccines. Antibiotics. Now, while I believe that antibiotics have, have their place and time, they really do. Okay, sometimes it's okay to take it. Uh, we cannot just simply give it to people who don't need it, especially children. When you have a healthy born child, you don't want to just give it antibiotic. Why? Because broad spectrum antibiotics are responsible for creating a superbug, which becomes antibiotic resistant and is killing thousands of people all over the world. Formaldehyde is in a vaccine. It is a chemical preservative that is used to preserve dead bodies and organs. Okay? It, is, it causes brain damage and various rare cancers. MSG, monosodium glutamate, is excitotoxin. Do I say it right in English? Or I have to go like that? Okay. <laughs> no, it's excito or excitotoxin. All right. I would say in my country, excitotoxin, so I don't know, excitotoxin, that is mainly used as a food enhancer and it has an ability to overstimulate brain cells until they finally die. So it is extremely toxic to the brain. It causes headaches, mainly migraines, fibromyalgia, attention problems. And this is this ADHD in children. It's from MSG in a vaccine. Okay. Timerosol is a mercury-containing compound that causes permanent damage of the brain and nervous system. Many flu vaccines still contain timerosol and all vaccines have minute amounts in it. There is no safe dose of mercury. When my son received a vaccine, it was supposedly timerosol free. It was MMR he received and my pediatrician told me, don't be worried, it's timerosol free. So I was happy. At that time, actually, I believed in vaccines. I, I was a nurse and I really was brainwashed into believing how wonderful vaccines are and I thought I'm doing the best thing for my kids, for my child, for, for my son. My daughter never received vaccines because it was my son who was a guinea pig. So <laughs> she benefits from that. Uh, but <laughs> anyway, uh, doctors will tell you that there is timerosal free vaccines. There is no such thing as timerosal free vaccines. It's a, lie it's wrong it's just wrong because every single vaccine has a minute amounts of mercury and n there is no safe dose not even a minute amount it's a it causes per permanent brain damage it's really dangerous and you should never have it in anything you put inside of your mouth or inject uh, or inside of uh, injection Next slide, please. Vaccines in your faith. All right. I'm kind of puzzled of a strange silence of faith leaders. Because we are not hearing anywhere that vaccines can come in, uh, you know, that we have to have some kind of problems as Christians with vaccines. Did you ever hear any pastor preaching anything about it? Now, look, I'm not here to judge you. I received vaccines myself. I'm a vaccinated person. I went to college in the United States, and the first thing they did is they gave me a bunch of vaccines. 
okay, because I missed them from my country, so they made sure I got them here. Uh, I'm not saying and judging you because you decided to have vaccines, but Creator has shown concern about what we put inside our body, didn't he? He had a kosher law, and only ceremonially clean animals were allowed to be consumed. No pig. And I know some of you say here, oh, you know, but the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. And that's fine. I'm not here to argue. I think you are still my brother or sister in Christ. But I tell you, I will never eat a pig. <laughs> because I think that God had such a wisdom. And if you go and research what pork does to your body, just research it. I think your stomach is going to turn and you will say, I'll never eat it again. He had his reasons. Pigs are not food. Okay, they're supposed to clean this earth of filthy things. And they are very intelligent animals, by the way. They have IQ of five-year-old children. Did you know that? I respect them for why they're put on this earth. <laughs> but they're not my food. And if you eat pig, it's fine. I'm not, I'm not going to look at you, baby, because you have a sausage here tomorrow morning. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> I'll still love you. I, I am not here to judge anybody. I'm speaking my own mind, and I think I have a right to it. <laughs> okay. Guys, vaccines are not kosher. If you are concerned about kosher diet, you should be really looking into vaccines. They're not kosher. Vaccines do violate Torah principles, and they violate Christian principles, and this is why. Vaccines contain disease monkey kidney cells. That's from polio vaccines, and earlier I told you about SV40 virus that caused epidemic of cancer in United States of America. This was admitted by CDC, Center for Disease Control. It was on their website and they later took this down. I'm not just making this up. Vaccines contain cow, pus, and blood. Smallpox vaccines. Cells from aborted fetus tissues. That's cannibalism to me. They abort children and use them to make vaccines. Now, this is a Christian issue. This is a Christian principle. We are pro-life. We are against abortions. Okay, so why would we support or be completely silent and willingly inject our children with something that contains cells from aborted babies? Pig blood, horse blood, rabbit brain, dog kidneys, sheep red blood cells. Now, Jewish people, what really amazes me are rabbis in Israel because they go through such a hard time to make sure that everything is kosher. When I was a meat eater two years ago, I wanted a steak in Israel. It was awful. <laughs> I mean, they go through like, you know, they will make sh sure that all the blood that can be out is out. I mean, they're really good at it. And as a result, the steak is really bad. It's like, yeah. <laughs> Never. I said, I never order steak in Israel. Never. Okay. So they go through all this trouble, you know. But then they don't tell their community about pig blood inside a vaccine. So, and that goes directly to a bloodstream of children, okay? So at least if you eat blood, your GI, your GI tract will detoxify some bad things or whatever, and you only absorb 1% or whatever, but this is going 100% into their body. So this is just puzzling. I don't know what to think about this, that now it's okay. And there are some sites they, they say that, oh, it's okay to have vaccines even if you're Jewish. I don't know. When you're a messianic believer here, because I know there is a lot of, of, of you maybe are, that should be your concern as well. So since the faith leaders are not talking about it, you need to do the job. You need to really do your own research and educate yourself. Now, let's move on. I will talk about transhumanism, vaccines and transhumanism, and how they're linked. I don't have much proof about this, so I'm going to talk about this as a, as a theory, okay, or as a rumor. That's better. 
rumor because there is a rumor out there and also there are whistleblowers and I'll give you their names okay so what is transhumanism it is the belief or theory that the human race can evolve beyond its current physical and mental limitation especially by means of science and technology transhumanism is international intellectual cultural movement supporting use of science and technology to improve human mental physical characteristics and capacities the movement regards aspects of the human condition such as disability suffering uh, disease aging involuntary death as unnecessary and undesirable Okay, so transhumanists look to biotechnology and other emerging technologies for these purposes. Now, we right now are in an age of transhumanism. Past two decades, they are working on transhumanism, they are working on changing our genes, our DNA, and they are working extremely hard to take us from what we are, biological entities, to something completely different. Does it remind you of the Bible verse when Jesus said that the times that are ahead of us will be like never before, like never in a history of man ever occurred yet? We are going, guys, maybe you don't believe me, maybe you say this is nuts. <laughs> it is. But when you start researching transhumanism and how scientists are talking about it and how many governmental programs are out there putting millions, billions of dollars in research of transhumanism, you know the word transhumans, trans is transition. It's a process of transitioning who we are as biological entities to making us into something completely different species. And we are in that process right now for past two decades minimum. Okay, next slide. All right, so I have another thing here. It's from Wikipedia. I'm not saying this is the perfect source, but this is where I got this from. Vaccines and transhumanism. Transhumanist thinkers predict that human beings may eventually be able to transform themselves into beings with such greatly expanded abilities as to merit the label post-human. Transhumanism is therefore sometimes referred to as post-humanism or a form of a transformational activism influenced by post-humanist ideal. Guys are selling transhumanism by telling you that you can become healthy, you can live long even forever, but they're doing it by the means of technology. This is not what Jesus talked about. <laughs> this is not how we are to gain everlasting life, not by technology, right? This is all that without God in mind. So let's keep moving. There is a rumor of nanobots in vaccines. What, what are nanobots? Nanobots are robots on a microscopic level, sometimes even smaller than a virus. They are microscopic, programmable antennas that can even self-replicate, they can self-reproduce. In a medical application, they look promising because they are very small and they can be programmed to kill cancer cells, repair damaged tissues. It is said that they can even replace human red blood cells. It's called artificial blood. And cells of organs such as heart, liver, kidney. And I'm going to talk here a little bit. You know, when people go to medical school, they expect to be learning about biology and human body and how it works. Well, right now they have these uh, subjects called robotics. And doctors are learning how to work with nanobots. Um, it's still kind of in the future, okay? I'm not saying that... Uh, it's well known yet. This is more of a secret or a rumor or whatever. But uh, even my son in a homeschool was offered, you know, they, wanted, they told me to sign him up for robotics and stuff like that. But nanobots are being heavily researched right now and billions of dollars, ta tax dollars are put into research of nanobots in medicine because they are going to sell you nanobots in your body by telling you in a soon future though, 
It's 2030, 2040. Okay, that's the goal. So a few years down. The nanobots, by putting nanobots in your body, they can replace your entire blood with nanobots who can replace your red blood cells. And then you won't have a heart disease. There will be no oxygen issues. Who likes to scuba dive? Anyone? You know I have a scuba diving license. Yeah, I do. I went through the training. It was amazing. But I will tell you what, I have to have, you know, oxygen with nanobots and artificial blood. You can stay underwater for four hours. Four hours underwater with no oxygen because you will have enough oxygen in your blood to support you under the water. I don't know, but uh, they are also saying that nanobots are going to cure cancer because you know what the problem with chemotherapy is? It not only kills the uh, bad cells, it kills the good cells as well. That's why the hair fell out and all that fell out, you know. So when you have nanobots, they can be programmed to kill only the diseased cells. Now that sounds so good. That sounds so promising. But the problem with nanobots is that they can be programmed to do whatever it is. So the nanobots in the wrong hands of our government who is spying on you? I don't know. And when nanobots are replacing your heart cell, like when I look in the microscope and I see a heart cell, I can say it's a heart cell, this is a kidney cell, this is a liver cell. That, that won't be there anymore because nanobots will replace all these organ cells. So when is the limit? When are you human and when are you not? Who are you when you don't have human cells but you have robots, robotic cells inside of your body? You're definitely not a homo sapiens sapiens. You are somebody else and they have a name for you. You are both human and you are a human 2.0. Did you know that? You're something else. All right, well, although it is said that it is not used yet, patents already exist. There are many governmental projects and programs. Last I looked, there was about 150 worldwide that invest in research of nanotechnology. Next slide. Oh, hold on, I gotta get it here. Okay. Now, Bible predicted transhumanism. Revelation chapter 9, verse 6. And in those days, people will seek death and will not find it. They will look to die, but death will flee from them. I know you can have interpretations of this verse. But more we move on to the future and the programs of 2030, 2040, when you look at what they're preparing, this verse is becoming more clear to me personally. Because these nanobots in your body, they are saying, and they will be selling them to you, that you can live forever. You can never have a cancer. Even diabetes is curable by nanobots because nanobots can be programmed to completely replenish pancreatic cells. If you know diabetes is a problem with pancreas and pan pancreatic cells uh, and insulin regulation. So nanobots can fix that. No more diabetes, no more heart disease. You can stay four hours underwater, have fun, swim with dolphins. Uh, you know, uh, there is no cancer anymore. Cancer, no big deal. Nanobots will take care of it, kill all the bad cancer cells. They're also saying that with nanobots, you will be growing younger, restore your youth, and you can live hundreds of years or forever even. So when your, your spirit, you're a spiritual being, you're not your body. You have a body, but you are not the body, you are actually spiritual being. I don't see you, real you I don't see. I see a physical hardware, I don't see your software, okay? So you're a soul living in AI body, which is a you know, completely different body than what you have right now. You may want to die <laughs> because you find out you are a slave, artificially being kept alive. Sometimes death is a release. Because when you die, you go to be with the Lord. Okay? So this is why this verse becomes, for me personally, by my research, this verse was so important. People will want to die and they can't. 
but they know that they are slaves to the system. Okay, another one, Matthew 24, 22. In those days, oh, if those days had not been cut short, no one would survive, but for the sake of the elect, those days will be shortened. That's from NIV, New International Version, which uh, much better translation would be in KGV right now. I'm going to uh, read it on KGV, from KGV. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved, but for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Why I say Bible here predicts transhumanism is the word flesh, because what does the word flesh mean in Greek, okay? Can you go to the next slide? All right, the Greek word for flesh, it's sarx, and it can be translated, you can look it up, it's a strong score concordance, the, as flesh, which is stripped of the skin, the meat of an animal, Okay, the body as opposed to the soul or spirit, or as the symbol of what is external, as a means of kindred, or human nature, or human being. So when Bible says that if these days were not shortened, flesh wouldn't be saved, Bible doesn't mean that people, humans like your soul wouldn't be here. It speaks of the flesh, your biology. Human, homo sapiens, sapiens would not be saved because you will be AI, somebody completely different. That's what this verse is talking about when you look at it in Greek language. So it's not like no one would be saved because everyone would just die. No, Jesus has to come. Yeshua has to come to save us from this because we are going into it with no choice. You know what, vaccines, there's a rumor, and I'll tell you who this rumor, who is a whistleblower for this rumor, that there are nanobots in vaccines, okay? If they're trying to pass the law in 30 states right now, that vaccines are mandatory. They are using fear on you. They're saying your kids cannot get to school, you won't be able to fly, you cannot get to work, Nurses in America are already going through it. All medical workers are, okay? They're losing their jobs when they don't vaccinate. Okay, so this is coming, but why, why we are losing this freedom? There is a reason for it. They're using fear because eventually they're going to, well, maybe there is a rumor they're already doing it, that these nanobots are in those vaccines. We are being injected with nanobots. We have no choice and they, can, they will be able to program our bodies. So this is why we have to speak out now. There is no time left. We have to be aware of these things. We have to talk about it. We have to educate. We have to stop it. And unless Jesus comes soon, no flesh, no homo sapiens, sapiens, no biological body will be saved because they're going with it full-blown programs. And if you study transhumanism, it's right around the corner. So this is extremely important for you to realize, to research your own research. I have given you here some names that you should definitely look into and research. Next slide. Thank you, brother. Dr. Sherry Tenpenny, she's a doctor of osteopathy, whistleblower, <laughs> okay? She's also activist against vaccines researcher and speaker. If you don't know her, please just put her name into Google. Go onto all of her websites. She has several. Write these names down. Do me a favor. Please don't miss any of these people I'm giving you. You must listen to them. It's about your life. It's about education. She will tell you all about vaccines and also solutions of what to do. All right, she is medical doctor. Now, I hats off to these people I'm giving you. You know, these people suffer tremendously much. They're being doctors not for prestige and money. They're doctors for you, okay? Because they're telling you the truth and they're being persecuted by government. And as you know, over 70 doctors are now killed over these issues. 
and only last night another doctor, young 45 year old female doctor killed again. Okay, they're killing these doctors. They need our support. You need to listen to them. I have personally interviewed Dr. Sherry Tenpenny, if you go on my channel, or even it was posted on Israeli News Live. So you can listen to that. Another one, Dr. Humphreys, medical doctor, I think she's a neurologist, highly educated, smart woman. If you listen to her, she's like a walking encyclopedia. All right, suzanne.net, drsuzanne.net is her website, medical doctor, speaker, author, researcher, activist against vaccines. Now, um, there is a documentary, it's a seven uh, series, okay? Uh, it's called The Truth About Vaccines, documentary series. There are seven movies. Um, Start watching this tonight. You cannot miss it. If you watch this, each one is better, better, better. You cannot miss not one. It's about seven hours long, so seven days, one hour each. The truth about vaccines. You must watch this. Again, please watch this. You can Google it. You'll find it. It's right there. It's free. Watch it you will have professional scientists, doctors, lawyers, over 60 professionals telling you how it is and the truth. Rima Lebo, medical doctor, psychiatrist. She is a whistleblower who is telling you that there are nanobots in vaccines right now. So that's the rumor. She gave out the rumor. Uh, I don't know who Richie Allen is, but she was on the Richie Allen's show. And on, on that show, uh, she did say that there are nanobots in vaccines right now. So she's extremely and heavily persecuted for advertising nanosilver as a cure for many diseases and for speaking against vaccines. So please look her up as well, Rima Label. She's a psychiatrist, medical doctor. Okay, so that's what I have prepared for you today. On tomorrow, I'm going to speak with Laurel about some solutions of what we can do. Uh, we are all affected. All. Even if I decided not to vaccinate my daughter, she's still affected because me and my husband were vaccinated. Uh, so tomorrow we will speak about some solutions. We'll have for you some solutions, what you can do to detox your body uh, and what you can do legally to protect yourself when you want to refuse vaccinations. Thank you for attention. You know how hard it is to live with a girl that smart? Yeah. <laughs>